Hello, this is Shikang. I'm the developer of Journeyman's Minimap for Unreal Engine. In this video, I'll show you how to integrate the Minimap plugin into your project. First, make sure that the Minimap plugin is installed for the right engine version. Then, open your project and make sure that the Minimap plugin is enabled. To do this, go to Edit, Plugins, search for Minimap, and make sure to enable it. If it wasn't enabled yet, uh, Unreal will then prompt you to restart the editor, which you should do. Now, in this video, we'll cover how to add the minimap to your screen, how to add background textures, like how to create the background texture, and how to add icons to your actors, how to animate those icons, and some of the other options that you have when configuring your icons and your graphics. In a next video, we'll cover how to set up Fog of War. So first start, let's first let's start by adding uh, the minimap to the screen. In this case, I am uh, I, I'm using the third person uh, template, but you can follow these steps for your own project. And since the third-person template doesn't have a UI by, by default, I'm going to create a widget to add this to the screen, and then I'll add the minimap to that. So let's create a new widget. I'm going to call it uh, widget master, master widget because this is the one being added to the screen. And then just to quickly add this, I'm going to add it through the level blueprint on begin play. So begin play, create widgets, widgets master add two viewports and I'll add a quick graphic like something visual so we know that this is working so I'll add a little text my UI make the text a bit bigger And since in the level blu blueprints we're adding this widget to the screen, this should work. Yes, it does. Okay. Now I'm going to add a minimap to this UI. So in palettes, I'll search for a minimap. And you can choose to drag in a bordered minimap, which contains uh, uh, graphics that are already that I prepared for you. Or you can go for a borderless minimap which is a widget that you can just uh, resize and then you can add your own graphics. Uh, in this uh, video, I'll use the, the bordered minimap. I'll attach it to the top right. And this bordered minimap has a couple of options, uh, some of which we'll return to later. But for starters, you can choose whether you want a circular minimap, which is this one, or you want a rectangular. Now, right now, is circular is unchecked, so in the game it'll become a rectangular one, which looks like this. But I actually like the cir circular one more, so I'll choose, choose circular. And then when you jump into the game, you see a circular minimap. However, the minimap right now is saying uh, minimap is waiting for, for map view. And what map view is, is um, it's waiting for information about what, what area to render. Now, to quickly um, have something visible in the minimap, and also to show you how to set up uh, background textures, I'm going to draw a map background component into the level. For this, search for actor classes, search for <coughs> actor classes uh, under the place actors uh, window. I will search for map background. You can drag it into the level and if you focus on it by pressing F, you'll see that the map background is actually a like a box volume. And this box volume, when I start the game, will be rendered from top down and visible in the minimap. And right now it also defines the bounds of that minimap, which, uh, which means like which area uh, the minimap renders. <coughs> 
Now we see the uh, background of the minimap now, which is uh, right now just a top-down uh, snapshot, but we don't see any icons yet. Now I would like to add an icon to this, to this uh, player character so that I can see him moving around on the minimap. So to do this, uh, I'll open the blueprint for this actor. And in this uh, third-person template, that blueprint is called uh, third-person character. I can go there by selecting the character actor and then clicking on the class in the, the world outliner. <coughs> now I can add a map icon component to this. And this will give this actor an icon. And there's a couple of options. First, there's the icon texture. Now I have an arrow uh, icon that's included with, uh, with the plugin that you can use for this kind of purpose, but you can also use your own textures, of course. If you want to see the icons that are included with this um, plugin, make sure that under view options here, you have show, show engine content and show plugin content enabled. Then you will see the icons because they're all prefixed uh, with T underscore icon. I will select T underscore player here, which is a arrow graphic. And this arrow graphic we want uh, to rotate when when the player rotates. Now that rotation and also the, the location of the, the icon um, on the minimap is determined by the fact that this map icon component is actually a scene component with a location and a rotation. And since it's attached to the actor, right now it will just follow the actor. To also make make the icon rotate based on the rotation of your actor, you can check the option icon rotate here. So now when I jump back in game, you'll see the backgrounds and you also see the arrow here, which is our player. So when I move around, you see the arrow also moving. Now let's suppose that instead of showing this uh, large view of the area, I would actually like the minimap to zoom in on the player and follow the player. To do that, open up the character blueprint again, <coughs> and this time add a map view component to this, this actor. And if you focus on that, you'll see that it again is a, well, it's like a, a rectang rectangle. And this rectangle, it defines like how far away should the player, should the minimap render from the player. So with this map view added, I can go back to the master widget, the widget in which we dragged our minimap widget. And there's a setting called auto locate map view. Now it's useful to know here that the map background actor that we placed before also has a map view component. So what actually happened was when the uh, when play begins, this widget would look up the uh, before it would look up any map view and it would encounter the map view component on the map background. But now there are two actors with a map view component the map background actor, and also the, the character, the player character. I would like to uh, have this minimap just show the uh, area around the player, which is defined by that map view component on the player. So I'll set this to on player, then start play again. And now the minimap is actually following the player. Now let's, um, let's add some more icons to this minimap. So I have an actor here, this, uh, this rotating question mark billboard. And I also add, add icon to that. And you can actually also uh, add icons through the level editor. So I'll choose this actor. And in the details panels here, so on this actor instance, not on the blueprint class, but in the map, 
I can also add map view components. In this case, the texture I'll set is actually Ah, oh, sorry, not a map view component. I should add a map icon component. And this this time I'll set the texture to a question mark, T icon quest 2, which happens to be a green, green question mark. Start play again. And there you have it. So this actor here has this question mark icon. I can make it bigger as well. So in the map icon component, I can set the size. Right now it's set to 32 pixels in screen space. I can make it larger, for example, 128. Play, now it's much bigger. Now right now, these icon sizes are set in screen space. So that means that even if I zoom the, the minimap in and out, the icon stays the same size on your screen. So it actually they'll appear larger or smaller depending on what you zoom in or out, but on the screen they're all the same size. What you can also do is set the uh, icon size in world space. This is useful if, for if you want the icon to, to overlap like an exact area, like, uh, like your quest uh, area. So if I set this to world space and I fill in, for example, uh, 1000, now the size of the icon will actually be 1000 in world units. And this is great for like quest areas. Now let's say that we also want to add some animation to these icons, or in this case to this question mark graphic. You can do this by changing the material of the minimap icon. So back on the map icon component, there is a material setting, icon material UMG. And you can create your own animations here, or you can use some of the animated materials that are included with this uh, minimap plugin. There's a couple included. Uh, there's this map icon flashing. So then the icon flashes in the game. There's also a, a map clock, and this is like a clock um, clock graphic, and you can set the uh, like a clock animation. You can set the like the fill value of the clock uh, through code. To check that out, uh, you can go to the Minimaps uh, minimap plug plugins content folder over here to the left. And under maps, in the icon futures map, there's a couple of uh, examples of uh, how to use uh, that clock material, as well as some of the other options for icons. And finally, there's also a, an included pulse material, which does not use the icon texture that you set, but it's actually a material driven pulse animation. Again, useful, useful for quests and for uh, objectives. In all cases, you can also give a tint to the icon. So right now the icon draw color is white, which means there's no tint. But we, know, we can also make it red, for example, and now the pulse will turn red. And if we change the material back to the default material, which just renders the icon, it also applies that tint to the icon. Now let's say right now the background is like a snapshot taken from uh, above when the game starts. But let's say that you want to use your own texture. To do that, select the map background component again, uh, the map background actor again in the world. Open up the background levels property, like expand that. And the reason why it's called background levels is because we can also have multiple height levels. I'll create a separate video on that. But if you open that up, 
you'll see that there's one entry with some properties there's a render target and there's a background texture these are the two most important properties so if you follow the uh, render target press on the the, the magnifying glass it'll uh, jump to the render target asset and this render target asset is right now where the snapshot is being saved to like on begin play it will create a snapshot and then uh, save it to this uh, asset well not save but it's the data is in that asset you can open it up make a screenshot of this and then draw over this in any image editor then save that to a texture and then import the texture back into the project and then under background texture you can select that texture so right now i'll just select a, a temporary graphic this uh this little smile, smiley face here and if the background texture is set then in game instead of rendering the snapshot it'll actually render this texture so if i jump in back now it actually renders that texture to represent the area that is inside this box volume this map background background uh, box volume this approach is uh is compatible with if your game uses procedural map generation or in an, in any game where the like even if you don't use procedural generation but your game doesn't have like a your world doesn't have like a box shape or a rectangular shape what you can always do is add more map background actors so you can scale these you can rescale these make them smaller and place multiple of these map background actors and assign each of them a different texture and then in the minimap all of those textures will appear together now if your game does use something like does do something like procedural, procedural generation you can also procedurally place map background actors and then assign textures to those because every each of these properties here is also callable callable from blueprints and also callable from uh, C++ so in this video we covered how to add the minimap to your screen then how to set up a map background actor so that you can see some see a background uh, texture for your video uh, minimap right away by default that's the that's a render from above but you can also replace that by assigning a texture to that area through the map background actor and i've also covered how to add icons to your actors how to change change the texture for uh for those actors and also how to uh, assign some animations and you can also create your own animations through materials there's one more uh, quick uh, feature that I want to show which is uh, also for quests so we have this uh, green uh, thingy here and it has this uh, right now it's a red question mark icon hold on let me reset reset all the graphics so um, delete these map backgrounds unassign this texture so that it uses the render again and that question mark icon make it a bit smaller smaller again okay so let's say this question mark is your quest objective right now when you move out uh, when you move away from the actor the icon disappears from the mini map of course what you can also do is configure that map icon component and enable objective arrow 
when you do that and you move out and, and the icon moves out of screen it actually turns into an arrow that follows the shape of the minimap and keeps pointing towards where that actor is so that when you get closer again and then it turns into the icon again so also very useful for quests so to repeat again uh, we, we've shown how to add the minimap to your screen how to add background textures and then how to add icons to your actors uh, i hope this helps a lot and then in the next video i'll cover how to set up uh, fog of war